Hi, I'm Franz with Concrete CMS, and today we're going to talk about the calendar that's built into your Concrete site. So the Atomic theme doesn't have a calendar set up on it, but all Concrete installs do have a calendar and time model built into the core. We did this. We decided that the core CMS should have a way of dealing with time because so many different websites need to use it. Maybe you've got a calendar, maybe you're selling event tickets. There's, there's lots of reasons to use time and date on a website. And it's really frustrating if every extension for a content management system uses a different time and date model to handle that. So we built a calendar into the core and different extensions can use it in different ways. What I'm gonna show you today is how to set up a calendar in the atomic theme using stuff that is just stock concrete. So let's get started. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make a page on the website to house our calendar. This is gonna be where we have um, a list of events. And so let's go ahead and just make an empty event page. We will choose where it goes. Mm -hmm. Here we go, we will make it under home. And I think that's about all we need. Go ahead and make sure that page exists. All right, we've now got an events holder page. Um, next thing that we're going to need to do is set up some page types. So we're going to want to create individual pages underneath this for each event that we make. And so we're going to need a page type and an attribute to store that event information in. So we'll go to the dashboard, pages and themes. And if we come into page types, we're going to go ahead and just take the page, page type. Uh, we'll copy that and call it event detail handles can't have spaces in them I'll do it like that great now if we take a look at this event detail um, we have everything that you need to start customizing what that individual page for the event will look like um, next we'll go to attributes and we will create a new attribute and we will use calendar event for that. Um, here again, what we're doing is making a place to store the information uh, about the events that we're making and associate that with page. So now that that is made, um, we can set up a calendar. So we'll go into the dashboard and right here you see calendar and events. And we need to make a calendar. There's no calendar set up by default. You can have multiple calendars. So maybe you wanna have different calendars for different departments or, or um, all sorts of different things, but um, you have to make one to do anything. And at its simplest, you can just have a calendar, make events, and they just show up um, at that summary view. But if you want to have detailed pages for them, you can choose one of these options. We're gonna go with um, automatically making a page if one doesn't exist. And so Concrete wants to know, well, where do I make those new pages? And that'll be underneath events. It wants to know what type of page type am I gonna use, which page type, the detail, and then that attribute that we made, where do I store the actual event information? So let's add that calendar. And there we are. Now we've got a month view on a calendar we've just made. I'll add an event. And put some content in here so you can see this is uh, content, and you can add attributes here. You can define your events to be strongly typed in all sorts of ways that make sense for your organization. So if you haven't explored attributes, you really should. Um, and here are the dates for this particular event we're making. So um, at its most basic, you can pick a day, starting and ending times, all in five minute increments. And um, that's pretty obvious. Uh, just like your Office or Google Calendar, you can make an event span all day and not have time. You can also make it a repeating event. So maybe it happens every week on Fridays. And you want... These are repeating options that you should be pretty familiar with from using Office Calendars. You can also add multiple date time occurrences. So maybe this event happens every Friday but for some reasons beyond anyone's understanding, it also happens on this one Monday at a different time. Well, you can do that as well. So now we've got two occurrences, one of them with recurring 
uh, aspect and the other one is just this one-off date. So let's go ahead and publish this so you can see what I mean. Here's the event that we made just um, on today. And uh, as I go forward, you can see here it is repeating again. And here's that one-off occurrence that we made. So um, just a sense as to how that works. Let's go ahead and set up the front end for this calendar. If we go back to the website and we're on the events page, we're going to uh, put this page in edit mode and add the calendar block right there to the main area. Now we can actually pick a calendar and we can change a whole lot of stuff here around what the view will look like. I'll take you through a little bit of that later, but let's just add something basic to begin with. Publish changes, and here we go. There's that same calendar we were looking at in the dashboard, but now it's on a page on my website. You can share this with your audience and you've just added a calendar to your site. If I click on this event, it takes me to a page with no content. So how do we fix that? Well, let's go to pages and themes and page types. And we know we made this event detail. Uh, what we didn't do is put anything on that page type. We just made kind of an empty container. So we'll click output. And now we're choosing for the templates that we're allowed to use on this page type, where do we want to put certain blocks and attributes? So let's pick full and we'll be given this interface that feels a lot like editing a normal page, but there's no gear icon. Um, we're going to add the detail calendar event to the main area. And we're going to pick uh, pulling the data from the page that we're on and using the event details attribute set that, uh, that we set up earlier. And we'll turn on all of the information we can show. And we'll add this block to the page. Um, one last step we're going to do, since we already made that earlier event before we changed the page defaults, we're going to click the block that we just made and choose set up on child pages. This is going to let us go through the whole site for any pages that have already been made following this page type and add this block, which did not take long. All right, so now we should be able to leave here and... There's no versioning on, on that type of work. That all happens live. And if I come back to the calendar and go to the event detail, you can see now we're displaying the title, when it happens, some information, um, everything you need to know. You can also see that the date on that one was the 30th and the date over here uh, reflects October 10th, which is when we clicked through. If you look at the URL structure, you'll see there's some creative work going on so that each of these events has its own page, um, but you can still change stuff centrally. So if I come back to the calendar and I want to edit this page, and I publish this event, now if I go through those different occurrences of the same event, you can see now we have a description. So um, everywhere that this shows up, we'll have that updated information. So there you go, there's the calendar. It's built right into your concrete site. It's just not set up in the atomic theme by default. Um, it's very powerful to do lots of stuff with this. So I hope that helps and I'll see you in more videos.